Hello, what's up guys? This is Berkan from Headphonia and today I'm going to show you the Shangling M8 flagship Android player. It's been a very long time since we shared a YouTube video, but I decided to add a specific video for the M8 and show you some of its features, build quality, design and software. My sound impressions will be in the review itself in the actual article but for now we can focus on the no sound topics here and in the end of this video I will share my initial impressions about the sound and I will save my last word for the review article. Now here I have the wooden box of the M8 as you can see it's it's a very premium looking box and it actually feels the same as well when you touch it by your own hands. And this has become very popular since the Asylin current players when you purchase a flagship player, it usually arrives in a wooden box like this nowadays. And I found it very nice uh, with its magnetic lid, which is uh, pretty cool to open up. And here we have it. And here on the right side, we have this small case, which stores uh, various headphone sockets. You guys probably know that Shangling came up with a new idea of changing the headphone sockets and so that you will not need any types of uh, accessories or uh, cable adapters whatsoever. It's a well executed idea and uh, since changing cables and using adapters with different types of uh, outputs are some kind of an issue, you know, and I congratulate Shangling on this solution. And the case itself is very good. Uh, it's a very good leather case for storing these sockets here. So it's very thoughtful and cool looking. And with its uh, stitch sides here, and it has a very smooth texture. And of course, uh, the sockets here are 2.5 uh, to 3.5 Pro and 4.4 millimeters and this is the actual uh, accessory to, to t change the uh, change the sockets and I will show you how to change them in the second part of this video it's a bit finicky but uh, it's not it's not very diff difficult uh, now let's take the player out and see how it feels it's quite large and big uh, as expected, but it's not heavy as I thought actually. In terms of weight, it is actually quite similar to Sony Walkman VM1A, but its size is of course much bigger. And here I can show you a size comparison with the SP2000 from AK. It's, it's very large, but uh, actually it feels better in the hand because it's a more rounded device on the sides versus the SP2000's uh, edgy design. So it, although it's quite big, it feels uh, really comfortable in the hand. And uh, it's a very nice premium feeling in hand with rounded sides, of course, three buttons for playback on the left side. And on the right side, we have the volume pot which also acts as a power button. So it's something like those AK players. But uh, I would have liked to have wider pots with a protruding profile so it will be easier to turn, especially when you put the player in its case. Uh, it's not very convenient to turn the knob. It's a bit difficult, but the sound feedback also is not, uh, not very premium. Uh, to be honest, here you can hear the sound. Um, honestly, you don't push this button too often, so that's not a big deal for me, but when you compare it uh, to the AK, you can see the difference very clearly. The headphone jack is here. Uh, on the top and it looks almost exactly the same as the VM1A design wise uh, from the top. So uh, I think there's definitely some inspiration 
from the uh, Japanese brand, I think. And it's actually very good. I mean, I like the overall feel and the full black color, which looks really awesome and, and professional. And on the back, we have two high-res audio stickers here. One is the regular stick sticker and the other one is a wireless high resolution sticker and it's actually the first time I see a secondary audio sticker in the device. And there's the logo which completes the design very well. So overall design is um, very satisfying and the user experience, especially uh, the build quality is very nice. It feels very rigid, solid and uh, one piece. I mean, it's heavy, but not so heavy like this uh, SP2000 or something like a Sony VM1Z. It's a bit lighter than those, but it still feels very, very good. So let's uh, power up the device and see how it goes. There we go. It looks very good. Uh, the screen has uh, great sharpness. Uh, you can see the boot animation here, which is also very cool. Uh, again, uh, the screen has great sharpness and it produces uh, great colors. So here we go. It, it, it opens up uh, pretty fast. And uh, it's not a lightning fast device like some other devices from uh, Hebe Music who are doing very well by the way when it comes to a snappy response with powerful CPUs and so forth but uh, you know uh, we know that those kind of CPUs can affect the sound quality in a bad way so it's not also easy to shield those CPUs from the outer circuitry so uh, it's not really fair to judge companies by uh, strictly by CPU selection because the top priority when it comes to digital audio players like this uh, is the sound quality. Uh, you can see I, I selected this uh, wallpaper which is the best I think in this device which I think it looks uh, very very professional here which shows you the double DAC system uh, which is of course uh, 4499 EQ from AKM. Um, the touch response is is really really nice I mean this is actually Android 7.1 so it's a bit of an old version but I actually don't care because it's all about the high quality sound here as long as it supports streaming services like uh, like Tidal, I'm basically okay with it. Now, uh, my device uh, has some issues with uh, Google Play services as of now, but I'm sure it can be solved very quickly. But I haven't, but I haven't tried it because it's not necessary for me. It has APK services like this one, APK Pure, which you can uh, install apps from, and. Uh, and I already installed Tidal from there, so I don't think you will ever need Google services unless you have a very specific reason. It's uh, vanilla Android. It's very pure and simple. There is no unnecessary uh, additional apps here. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, very simple. You can see there are no uh, additional on-screen buttons here um, you can swipe up uh, from to get to home screen basically like this and when you swipe up and wait you can see the last latest uh, applications open so you can clear them which is these are standard operations but uh, it's nice to not have the on-screen buttons because I like it this way and I use my smartphones like this with swiping functions you know when you open up something and if you want to go, go back 
you can swipe from the side here and also of course the top menu uh, as i said the software is very clean and overall the speed of the device is not like uh, of course some some something like modern day smartphones but uh, it's good and fast enough for, for day to day uh, operation and that's what matters uh, to me you can also switch uh, to the prime mode which is basically a, a pure music mode uh, from here you can see you, put, you tap ok and you go to the uh, prime mode which has a very basic screen to play your local files um, I don't have local files right now in the device so I can't, uh, can't show you anything here but you can see the settings which has uh, a lot of things you need uh, basically everything you need is here and one thing I liked is to have Wi-Fi transfer option so you can uh, you can copy your file from your computer over the air without uh, without any need for USB cables and also here it has uh, the LHTC Bluetooth codec uh, Hi-Fi Man brand likes to use this so it's nice to have here you have USB playback settings for DST files here you can play them natively and there's the folder skip option which is quite important for me the sleep timer you can select the theme and there's the equalizer here which is a, I think it's a 10 band equalizer which is pretty nice and there are some presets here uh, the best thing here is if you want to go back to the Android mode you just tap here and boom you are in Android mode uh, that means you don't have to wait for a restart of the device to get back to Android and same thing as the same thing applies for the other way around so it's nice to have as long as streaming goes you know I haven't had any problems with Tidal so far it works really really fast I mean it's faster than the SP2000 actually uh, which is kind of cool I mean you can see it op opens up really fast loads up everything so I don't think you will ever need more speed uh, here it's it's really fast enough like I said and the screen is absolutely nice uh, as you can see here it's it's beautiful so overall my uh, my overall impressions are very positive in terms of the general experience and the battery life is nice by the way uh, when I had the device uh, it was 75% and I've used it uh, for some time now, quite some time, and it's still 67%. And I haven't charged up the device yet. So it's just arrived. I tested uh, with some songs like, I don't know, maybe uh, 20 minutes of time or something. And it doesn't drain fast. So it has a good battery and it has a powerful output. I use it uh, with the lowest gain setting right now with my uh, custom IEMs and it's, it's really powerful. I use it uh, at uh, 25 to 30 volume and uh, it's, it's really enough for me. So, and the maximum volume is obviously 100 so, uh, and I'm at the lowest gain setting so it's really powerful I think I haven't tried it with a headphone or something like that but I will of course for the review and uh, to sum it up uh, this 
volume part is a bit underwhelming but other than that the overall experience is is absolutely great especially the screen uh, the battery life the interchangeable headphone sockets which i think it's it's a really really nice idea you don't have to use any adapters or something like that to possibly degrade your sound so uh, i think Shanlink has a winner here it's a really really great device for me so the next part of this video uh, i will show you how to change the sockets of, of uh, the headphone outputs, I mean, and uh, then I will share my uh, first impressions of the sound quality of this one, and then I will, of course, publish my full review on headphonia.com. So don't miss it, check our site uh, every now and then, and be sure to subscribe. Uh, our video channel and if you want this videos coming let us know in the comments so we can have an idea because uh, when we starting when we started shooting videos uh, it was not the best and we know it and it's it's not our specialty of course so we're trying uh, to get better and if you share your comments with us it will be uh, appreciated and uh, Thanks for watching.